I've been sick. <laughs> that was not planned. And I'm not actually sick anymore, despite how I sound. And maybe look, who knows? I should probably actually connect this to my shirt. Um, no, mm, fuck it. If it gives us bad sound, we'll deal with it later. Welcome back to Low Effort Intermediary Content. I'm changing how that camera is positioned. Um, like I said, your boy being sick. Oh no, how terrible, how awful. Um, so it's now been like almost a month since I last posted what was meant to be a semi-weekly series. So emphasis on this, this semi. Uh, today we're talking very, very serious, serious topics. Um, I like thinking about stories that don't really need to be thought about, like Pokemon. Pokemon, the point of Pokemon is not a deep and complex, rich story that uh, explores uh, deeper themes. It's, man, look at those cool fucking thingamajig animal-ish thingos and collect a team of them. Be annoyed that you can only have six in a team. Go beat shit up. Dog fighting. Yeah! <coughs> what the? I'm, I need to get my water bottle. Um, but specifically, I do really enjoy thinking about stories that maybe haven't quite lived up to certain bits of the potential, not because it's a failure of the story and they should be ashamed and you should be ashamed for liking it, but because for my own writing purposes, it's quite useful. So, this is gonna be a mostly off the cuff, what I remember of different villainous teams in Pokemon, talking about what I like, what I didn't like, what, how I think it could be adjusted to be interesting and new and varied and fascinating different approaches. Um, I could absolutely have like Googled, like even just Googled the plot of the various games to remind myself because I have not played a Pokemon game for a hot minute. But this is low effort intermediary content. So we have what I remember of the game and what I reckon could probably be a cool thing to put in without much extra thought beyond that. Get in the comments, tell me I'm a fuckwit, boost that engagement through your sheer spite. Hell yeah. Best place to start is probably also one of my, my favorite of the teams, which is Generation 1, Team Rocket. Now, to be honest, the best part of Team Rocket is not in the games. The best part of Team Rocket is, of course, um, Jesse and James and Meowth. That's right. We love them. Two gay disasters and they're fucking an, an ally of a cat. But Team Rocket in the games, I think, is actually one of the best executions of a villainous team within the context of Pokemon because it's not... It's not treated as more than it is, right? There's this escalation of scale that you kind of get throughout the Pokemon games where generation one, it's just like, oh no, if I don't defeat the evil team, I won't be able to get my final badge and become the best there ever was. And in gen two, it's like, oh no, if I don't defeat the evil team, uh, they'll succeed in these like money-making schemes. Done. And then gen three, all of a sudden, it's like, if you don't defeat the evil team, they'll drown the planet. Generation four, if you don't defeat the evil team, they will destroy all of reality. And something that I appreciate about, yeah, appreciate about gen one is that it just kind of treats it as what it is. An obstacle, low stakes, and I think there's a lesson to be drawn in, in your own writing, in my own writing, that sometimes all you need for an effective villain um, antagonist is to just treat them with the respect they deserve, or lack thereof. Not any particular notes for Gen 1, if I'm honest, because if they had tried to treat Team Rocket as like this terrifying, dark, massively powerful force, mm, it would fall flat, but they don't. They treat it as... Here's some people doing shit things to Pokemon. 
And I like how it's escalated in Generation 2, where it's instead of uh, just doing shit things to Pokemon, there is also an overarching plot tying back into the events of the first game. It's not a massive world domination plan, it's uh, someone who's misunderstood the circumstances that caused the original boss, Giovanni, to retire, and so he wants to make it all come back and bring the glory days of Team Rocket back. Um, that's a fun little thing. As you may have guessed by now, Gen 3 is where things get a little dicey and a little slicey and a little maybe needs some severe repairs to be safe to live in. See. Because, um, <laughs> like... Okay. Fundamentally, I think that a lot of Pokemon teams could be fixed by treating them as stupid as they are. Like, well, treating them as, as stupid as they are. Because, like, I would love it if there was this, this system within uh, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire where in Pokemon Ruby you had the map as it already is with, like, half of it underwater and fucking so much surfing. God, I hate it. And if you had in Pokemon Sapphire it having large areas, those same routes, out of the water um, as being, like very, very little surf. And the idea being that, yeah, there is a tangible difference between these two versions of Hoenn, one that is severely, like has a severe drought and a severe lack uh, of water, and one that has severe flooding and is like really difficult to get around. And the evil team in whatever situation is going, oh, we have to fix that by bringing uh, this, this ancient Pokemon back into the world of the waking and they will bring a great uh, flood or a great, not flood, the opposite of flood, drought, that's the word, um, to the world and fix all this shit. So yeah, the evil team's doing dumb, dumb levels of like, no, we have to, we have to awaken this ancient Pokemon. But uh, you have maybe Stephen Stone, um, like as you meet throughout the uh, the journey and you're talking to him and he's being like, yeah, this is a, a deep and complex issue. We need to make sure that we aren't jeopardizing current Pokemon habitats. Um, it is important that we make this change because it's having terrible implications all across the region. Um, but the way that we should go about it is by having like teams of Pokemon who use like Rain Dance and Sunny Day to more accurately control certain bits of the weather while we deal with larger issues that are causing this to happen. And then periodically you just get like this group of fucking numb nuts being like, yo, have you heard about this great and ancient Pokemon that we will raise from the deep? And just have them be treated as fucking dumbasses. Could be fun, could be great, could be good. Because fundamentally, like it's a children's game. Anyway, I feel like in generation four, Cyrus should be a deeply suicidal person and that should not be left to even the slightest bit of implication. If you have each of the different evil teams being a, a group in society uh, represented in that group where you have criminal, empire, like uh, organized crime, eco-terrorists, um, animal rights activists for, for Generation 5, uh, Team Galactic is a corporation in like the the world of pokemon it should just be a cult there is doomsday cults that get off the ground all the fucking time you can look into those and and get inspiration from that on how to properly organize this this cult but it shouldn't be a corporation how do you convince people who are just there for a paycheck to destroy the fucking world i mean and you're already there no one no one who is in control of their own hairstyle gets a bowl cut. That is something that other people forced you to get for the sake of efficiency. Don't fact check me on that. I don't. This it feels like it's going to be an incredibly disjointed video, but who gives a shit? Low effort intermediary content. That was a good one. I feel like Cyrus should be someone who just wants to die, but who for some personal reason uh, doesn't, like wants to make the death mean something and has decided to go out doing something so ridiculous it could never possibly occur, destroying all of creation. And he's just kind of accidentally managed to do it 
and at this point he can't quite bring himself to care that he's actually going to destroy all of reality. And so he's promised to like this entire cult and all the generals their own like little slice of this new world that he's making in, in, in the image of something greater and grander. But because he's a deeply depressed person, this greater and grander thing is just nothing. It's just a forever of nope. Existence? No, thank you. Uh, what's the, th maybe a Pratchett quote of like, existence began, oh no, Adams. Some fucking status writer of like, the universe began 13.4 billion years ago and has since made a lot of people very unhappy and has been generally considered as quite a bad idea. I butchered that quote. He's a nihilist, but the sort that hasn't worked out that life is beautiful and worth living. Um, you know? Maybe you know, maybe you don't. I don't think you do. Fuck you, actually. Generation five. I, I'm sure that if I had scripted this, I could have had a much longer, a more, a more soulful description of Cyrus's struggle, but I don't give a shit. I'm not scripting this. If I try to script it, the video will never come out. You get the mess of jumbled thoughts just coming, stream of fucking consciousness, edited gap, gaps edited out, so it's just, too much coming at you all at once. Much like insert reference to fucking, to fucking, just, just to fucking actually. That's, I was gonna make like a fucking porn bullshit reference, but fucking covers all the bases. Much like when it's coming at you at all angles. Okay, we're moving on. Generation five is widely considered the, um, the best generation of Pokemon from a, a story perspective, because what Pokemon did is something never before done by anyone and examined their own premise and went, hmm, maybe the morality of putting dubiously sapient creatures in tiny little balls and then forcing them into dog fights might not be great. But the conclusion that was drawn is it's fine, they like it, which is a Bit of a bonkers conclusion. I'm not gonna sit here and say that Pokemon needs to find a way to justify something that is kind of in the context of our world pretty unjustifiable by like making it so that there is definitely actual, actually great assistance within the world that make everything all good and dandy. But like, it'd be nice if at the very least it was made clear over the course of the game that like the only, the reason that there is a capture rate is that Pokemon need to have your strength and ability as a trainer proven to them for them to be willing to get into a Pokeball. So it's like the more expensive Pokeballs are just like more comfortable or like they prove that you have the money to take care of the Pokemon. And the reason that you have to get them down to low health is to prove that you are capable of training Pokemon to be strong and be able to, like you're essentially proving your strength to this Pokemon who then wants to use being trained by you to become stronger. It would be nice if that was set up and also the fact that there are Pokemon that just cannot be caught and are never caught and they're just off the side of the routes and don't interact with humans. That could be cool, that could be fun, I guess. I don't really remember Gen 5, if I'm fully honest. Um, it seems chill. Fucking wild that they're wearing like actual chainmail. But that's not an original take, so ignore that I said it. I could edit it out, I'm not gonna edit it out. Moving on to Generation 6. I have such a soft spot for Team Flair because God, they're a nothing sandwich, but I fucking love them anyway. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that a lot of the uh, various evil teams are just groups of society being portrayed as fucking off some sort of deep end. And Team Flair isn't. Team Flair is a lot of people in suits who are technically employed by a billionaire, but at no point is there made like a broader point about corporate corruption and, and the impact of, you know, uh, a capitalist anything on the world, which is odd because 
Kalos is meant to be an analogue for France, and France gave us the guillotine. Like, it's very... If you ask people about French history, if they know anything, it's like when the Eiffel Tower was built and the way that they cut people's heads off for being too rich. You would have cause to write a plotline about a billionaire mistreating workers. Like, imagine if uh, the town around the fucking, the ancient weapon that either kills everyone or makes someone immortal or both. I think it's always both, but then the plan just with nothing else in the game changing between X and Y is Lysander being like, well, time to kill everyone, or, well, I don't want to be immortal anymore, time to make you immortal, children. It's not, it's not great. I love it. It's deranged as all fuck, but it's not good. <laughs> um, but imagine if uh, Lysander's company, which I'm going to call Lysander Core, it could be something else, Pycor Incorporated. Pyroar Incorporated? No, I prefer Pycor Incorporated. That that works better. Pycor Incorporated has like a company town, right? And imagine that that is centered on the um, the standing stones that are the very tip of the ancient weapon, uh, poking up from below the ground. And imagine that this is a like a bad company town. This is a place where you are only allowed to enter if you are a resident because you or someone, like, you or a parent works for Lysan, for, uh, Pycor Incorporated, uh, at this town doing whatever sort of factory bullshit, or if you are a gym challenger, because the only thing in this town, which I don't think had a gym in the game, but it's fine, we'll move one of the other ones, she'll be right. Or you're a gym challenger going through because the establishment of Pokemon gyms is powerful enough to have made a deal with Lysander to allow people to go through. And what's made clear is two things about this company town. It is deeply, deeply, powerfully impoverished, where people are only given enough to live if they are living in this town. And that everybody in this town thinks of Lysander as just a stand-up fucking man, a working class hero, and it is established throughout the course of the game that he came from wealth. And what you have at the culmination of the game, where you're standing in front of the, the controls, is that Lysander, either over the course of the game, has been established with his already in-game motivation of wanting Wanting an actress that he knew when she was young, who is now Pokemon champion, to be young and beautiful forever, and... Basically, Lysander is a hard-on for a teenager who is no longer a teenager and he wants her to be a teenager again. And he will use whatever means are necessary for him to make a slew of immortal teenagers. Look, there's only so much you can do with it, but... There is more, and part of that thing that he's willing to sacrifice is the life of everyone in the company town because they've already sold their soul to the company store. He owns them, they should be glad to die for the greater good. Or, alternatively, he wants to create a young and beautiful and pure world by eliminating all that is old and broken and infirm. So he will kill everybody in that company town because they were not strong or powerful or exceptional enough to become something special, even though he's the one that put them in the situation that stopped them from becoming exceptional. Make Pokemon a critique of capitalism, you cowards, Nintendo. <laughs> Once again, this is all very broad strokes thought, but like, you had a billionaire antagonist in France and didn't do anything with that. There's potential. There's things. Um, if you're gonna write a, a fanfic about the various evil teams of Pokemon, as I'm sure every single person who watches this video will do, go and do it, go and do it right fucking now. It's a chance to think of how to make it more and better, maybe. I don't fucking know. Generation seven. I actually like Generation 7. If I had to say my top, like, three evil teams in Pokemon, it would be um, Team Rocket, Team Plasma, and the fucking one-two punch of Team Skull and the... I forgot their name, Foundation. The anti-Team Rocket who ends up being evil.
Because Team Skull asks the question that I hadn't really been asked in Pokemon up to that point of, hey, this is like a rite of passage for a lot of kids. And what happens if they fail that rite of passage and they just kind of sit halfway through the challenge, unable to finish it, unable to give up on finishing it and go do something else. They just sit. And so you get Team Skull, a team of fucking goofballs, because they're treated as goofballs, which always makes the Pokemon evil teams better. Just doing shit. Are they just called the Lusamine Foundation? I don't care. The, the Foundation group, I don't hate. They're also there. They're fine. They serve their purpose. Lusamine becomes a fucking octopus squid woman. I... I don't remember that game well at all. <laughs> I haven't played any of the later generations. I don't know if this is gonna be usable, but it's low effort intermediary content. That is all, that is all of my rambling, unrelated, fucking tangential thoughts about Pokemon teams. Thank you for coming to my TED talk.